on October 9th, the Rockies will echo to a bone-rattling series of showdowns as Glory returns to the Mile High City for Glory 24 Denver. The middleweights dominate as the cream of the division go head-to-head in two epic battles, featuring three of the top four ranked fighters, plus tournament winner and local hero Dustin Jacoby. It's sure to be a night of knockouts. Rising star Jacoby will be looking to capitalize on his current streak and stop a motivated Wayne Barrett, looking to reassert himself in the division. And in the Gold Rush main event, everyone's favorite bad boy, the unstoppable Joe Schilling, meets immovable Jason Wilness as both men stake a claim for a title shot against Artem Levin later this year. Plus, things get heavy in the high plains as the big men bring the thunder in the heavyweight contender tournament. In this one-night elimination event, four of the biggest men in glory will battle for the chance to unseat the crown prince of kickboxing, Rico Verhoeven. It's time for glory! Welcome to the Mile High City of Denver, Colorado, site of Glory 24, coming Friday, October 9th. We last visited Denver for Glory 16 back in May of 2014, when it was a night of heavyweights as Errol Zimmerman won the contender tournament and Zach Moikasa knocked out hometown favorite Pat Berry in one round. This time, the middleweights take center stage in both the co- and main events in the most stacked of Glory divisions. Taking a look at the middleweight rankings show four of the top 10 fighters will compete in Denver, looking to get one step closer for a title shot with current champ Artem Levin. In our co-main event, it's number four ranked Wayne Barrett, coming in off of a tough loss to number one ranked Simon Marcus at Glory 20 Dubai. He faces hometown favorite number 10 ranked Dustin Jacoby, coming off his impressive win at Glory 23 Las Vegas in the middleweight qualifying tournament with knockouts of both Ariel Sepulveda and Casey Green. In our much anticipated main event, it's number two ranked Joe Schilling, fresh off his win against Robert Thomas at Glory 19. He's looking to establish himself as a worthy title opponent for Artem Levin, but to do so, he will have to go through number three ranked Jason Wilness of the Netherlands, who lost a tough decision to Simon Marcus in the tournament final at Glory 20. Also at Glory 24, the heavyweights take to the ring in the contender tournament, with the winner one step closer to a shot against current champ Rico Verhoeven. When we come back to Countdown to Denver, we travel to New York and meet up with Wayne Barrett as he prepares for his bout against Dustin Jacoby. It's sure to be a night of KOs in the Mile High City with Glory 24 Denver. Ten action-packed battles headlined by the middleweights as number two ranked Joe Schilling goes toe-to-toe with number three Jason Wilness. Then local favorite Dustin Jacoby against New York's Wayne Barrett. Plus, don't miss the one-night heavyweight contender tournament. Live from the Magnus Arena, Glory 24 Denver, October 9th, live on Spike. Welcome back to Denver, site of Glory 24 on Friday, October 9th. Born in Georgia and now by way of New York, Wayne Barrett spends most of his days training, preparing for Dustin Jacoby. Come check me out, Wayne Barrett. Representing the United States and fighting out of New York City, here is Wayne Barrett. I'm fast, I'm strong, I'm a thinker. You know, I see things, I move. I've never been knocked out, and I have real power. You know, I have real knockout power. This is unbelievable. You know, I can hit, and when I hit, I hit hard. I'm a bad boy, man. 
Ever since I, I stepped into a martial arts school, it just changed my life. You know, it fascinated me to say like, wow, you know, these guys can do amazing things. I was always someone that was into traditional karate and martial arts. Uh, I found boxing, unfortunately, when my uh, first karate teacher passed away. You know, I just couldn't train with anyone else. I didn't, uh, I didn't want to train with anyone else. You know, I just found myself in a boxing gym, just hitting the bag, and you know, guys were like, hey man, you're kind of good. He is a former Golden Gloves boxer. I won the Golden Gloves in Georgia, and then I transitioned back into kickboxing. This young middleweight has now set his sights on international kickboxing. You know, I love a challenge. Here comes. Kickboxers are a lot faster. It was a transition that required me to actually dedicate myself, or rededicate myself to being a combat athlete. This fight with Jacoby is an important one. You know, Dustin really did a really great job his last time out. And I want to show people that, you know, I'm the number one American here. He's been at a higher weight class. He's come down. He's fought some big name guys. He's fought in MMA. At six feet, 20 inches tall, he weighed even, even 205 pounds. A lot of guys he's fought, you know, they come straight at him and they stand straight up. Uh, everyone knows that's not my game. Dustin! You know, I make you miss and I move. He won't be able to bully me. I'm not afraid to go into his hometown. You know, a lot of people say, oh, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's high altitude, Denver, Colorado. Jacoby! You know, he won't be able to back me up in the corner. And he's gonna soon see that he's not gonna be able to fire off those punches in that wild fashion that he does against me. Oh man, that glory belt. When you get in this business and you're on fire like I was, you know, five and oh. Four of those five wins coming by way of knockout. You know, four knockouts just running through guys. You know, you think, oh man, everything is gonna be mine. The world is yours, you know? Al Pacino style. You know, you never really have a chance to think about the what if or the derailment. I felt like my first loss against uh, Joe Schilling. Barrett, meanwhile, Ray! one and one against his fellow American. I mean, his hometown was a straight robbery. But even Schilling at the end of the fight thought that Barrett maybe should be 2-0. Oh. Since my fight in Dubai with Simon Marcus, I will say I, I've mentally grown. Before I would overthink it, before, you know, when my first loss with Joe, it was like, oh man, you know, I was robbed and, you know, this boo-hoo-hoo -hoo story, you know, this blame everyone else but myself. Wow, I'm shocked. I probably would have given it to Barrett. But, you know, the one thing that I love about this sport and the reason why I love fighting is you can't blame anyone. You, know, you need more. You, know, you need to be a better person inside the ring and, and outside the ring. You know, a real champion is a champion everywhere. You know, I gotta be a champion when the cameras are off. I'm mentally stronger. I'm physically always ready. The mental aspect that I bring to this fight is greatly different than anything I've ever brought to a fight before. You know, I'm just gonna bring my A game. You know, myself, my team, we're coming up with a great plan. I believe in the plan and we're just gonna stick to the plan. You know, once the plan comes together, I don't think anyone can handle me. I wanna genuinely show people in a dominating fashion this fight that Wayne Barrett is still the most dangerous guy in the middleweight division. We'll see October 9th. Be there. Up next, it's Dustin time. Knockout moves by Tough Shed. The flying knee. The overhand right. The spinning back fist. Blow away the competition. Save time and effort. For the best storage buildings and garages, there's only one place to shop. Tough Shed. You're in clearance sale going on now. For the store nearest you, call Tough Shed today at 1 800 Buy Tough or visit us online at toughshed.com. It's sure to be a night of KOs in the Mile High City with Glory 24 Denver. 10 action-packed battles headlined by the middleweights as number two ranked Joe Schilling goes toe to toe with number three Jason Wilness. Then local favorite Dustin Jacoby against New York's Wayne Barrett. Plus, don't miss the one night heavyweight contender tournament. Live from the Magnus Arena, Glory 24 Denver, October 9th, live on Spike. Welcome back to Denver. Later on Countdown, we look back on the recently fought light heavyweight title fight between Salo Cavallari and Zach Moikasa. But now, 
His love of kickboxing is well documented in Dustin Jacoby's commitment to be the best Glory has to offer. Coming off his biggest night in Glory by winning the qualifying tournament at Glory 23 Las Vegas. Come October 9th, he faces his stiffest competition yet in front of his hometown fan. I train to be the champion of Glory. And that's my goal. I want to be the guy that everybody comes after. And, you know, it starts with Wayne Barrett on October 9th. Wayne Barrett was a Golden Gloves champion boxer. A knockout for your winner, Wayne Barrett! Barrett's a counter striker, which I think matches up well for me. Um, I'm ready to take my skills and use them against Wayne Barrett, put the pressure on him, and put on a show for the fans. You know, I think Wayne Barrett is going to be the best Wayne Barrett stepping into the ring that night, and that's what I'm looking forward to facing, to challenge, and I'm ready to tackle it head on. You can look pretty hitting pads in the gym when the camera's on you. Uh, it's different when you get into a fight. And I'm too big, I'm too strong, I'm too aggressive. I just need to work my game, stay tight, and put the pressure on him, and I think he'll fold. I don't understand when guys pick and choose who they want to fight, pick and choose when they want to fight. I chose fighting as a profession, and I'm ready at the drop of a dime. You know, I feel like Glory 23 in Las Vegas uh, was a huge momentum builder for my career. It put me in that spotlight and it gave people the opportunity to see me compete and dominate. I've had some ups and downs facing the best guys in the world, but because of that, facing them is the reason I went in and smashed the guys I smashed. my time to shine. This is Glory's time to shine. You know, I'm super excited about headlining the Glory 24 card here in Denver. This is where I live. This is where I train. Uh, I've got a lot of supporters locally and a lot of people within the United States that are coming and flying in to purchase a ticket to watch Glory. You know, one day I fight to be the Glory champion. When that day comes, I'll be ready. I just have to make sure I'm doing my job inside the gym. You know, focusing on one opponent at a time, and when that title shot comes, it comes. Glory 24 is coming to Denver live October 9th. Get your tickets, pack the house, support me, watch me take out Wayne Barrett in the co-main event. Still to come, we take a look at Joe Schilling as he prepares for Denver. But up next, we take a look at the one-night tournament of heavyweights who will descend on Denver October 9th. It's sure to be a night of KOs in the Mile High City with Glory 24 Denver. Ten action-packed battles headlined by the middleweights as number two ranked Joe Schilling goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with number three Jason Wilness. Then local favorite Dustin Jacoby against New York's Wayne Barrett. Plus, don't miss the one-night heavyweight contender tournament. Live from the Magnus Arena, Glory 24 Denver, October 9th, live on Spike. Four men, three fights, two semis, one final, all in one night. The Glory Contender Tournament. A unique four-man, one-night elimination event that earns the winner the right to a future title shot and the chance to become a Glory World Champion. Strategy, conditioning, and injuries are key. All in for a fast knockout? Or play a tactical game, score points, and conserve your energy for the final? With little chance for recovery, the semifinal winners will advance to the final. The winner is declared the contender and earns his shot at the world title. 
Four men, three fights, two semis, one final, all in one night. All for the shot at the title, for a shot at glory. Glory! The big men bring it on October 9th in a series of international heavyweight clashes. In the first semifinal, the new Gita meets the new Krokop as Nigerian-born Romanian Benjamin Adegbui takes on Croatian Mladen Brestovac. And with a terrifying KO ratio of 89%, Australian Ben Edwards looks to stop experienced Dutchman Jafar Wilness in the second. The tournament winner guarantees himself a shot at the title and a chance to unseat the crown prince of kickboxing himself, Rico Verhoeven, later this year. One heavyweight who will be watching closely on October 9th is contender and number nine ranked heavyweight Chai Lewis Perry, who spoke with Stephen Quadros at Glory Dynamite. Stephen Quadros here in San Jose at Glory Dynamite, and it's an international cast of characters, so who better bringing an English gentleman in but Chai Lewis Perry. Chai, what's going on? What's going on? Thanks for having me, man. What have you been up to lately? Uh, what have I been up to? Um, I just uh, thought I'd come out and check out the show. Uh, re recently relocated to um, the East Coast, Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, there with my family, and um, now I'm here on the West Coast trying to cause some havoc here at Glory. Last time we saw you in the ring in glory, 50% of the evening went well, then the other 50% didn't go so well. Xavier Vigny kind of stole some of your thunder. Your thoughts on that night and what you want to do in the future? Vigny didn't steal nothing. Vigny got, he got lucky. And uh, I want my rematch with Vigny so I can kick his bottom all over again. Okay, and there we have it. He wants a rematch and he wants Xavier Vigny. He's the big man, Chai Lewis Perry. Thanks a lot, mate. Cheers, brother. When we come back, it's time for Glory Dynamite and a look back at the light heavyweight title fight. Poverty, gang violence, and even civil war are just some of the obstacles Zach Mikasa and Salo Cavallari have overcome on their path to the vacant glory light heavyweight title. Mikasa in the white gloves, Cavallari in the black. Fighting out of the Congo by way of South Africa, former heavyweight boxing champ and number three ranked Mikasa is eager to avenge his defeat by number one ranked Brazilian Cavallari at Glory 18 and return to his native Africa a Zach! hero. Mukasa vows not to let Cavallari's fight-finishing ferocity take him down again and plans to drop the kind of bombs that has led to knockouts in his previous glory victories and an incredible 92% finish rate. Hailing from the slums of Curitiba, Brazil's most famous fighting city, Cavallari has come close to the title before, losing out to Tyrone Spong, but has gone undefeated in glory ever since, and feels this is his time to leave no doubt who is the best light heavyweight kickboxer on the planet. Business is about to pick up, my friend. It has been a hard road for both men. Both are proven warriors. Both are worthy contenders. As he was up to the ropes. Both fight for glory. Nice combination, right hand the body, left hook upstairs by Moikasa. There's that stiff jab, it's almost a power fly. And here we go with the tail of the tape for this glory light heavyweight championship affair. And no secret here, Sal Cavallari is younger, taller, and has over twice as many kickboxing matches as Zach Moikasa does. So Moikasa has really got to unleash that splash water punch of his and do it quickly. Fight! Right now, as they touch gloves, in essence, this is round number four in this rivalry, the rematch here at Glory. Cavallari coming right out with kicks. And there's that big baseball bat swinging high. Cavallari in the black gloves, Mwikasa in the white. Mwikasa known for a devastating left uppercut, just ask Pat Berry. A highlight reel debut for Mikasa. Endeavor now, Mikasa attacking the body. He has spent some time in the Netherlands preparing for this fight. Began as a sparring partner for Francois Bota back in the day as well. So he has been through it all and winding up with that catapult right hand that just missed. And he's throwing some serious intentions behind that right hand. Earlier on, Cavallari threw a really hard low kick, 
and Malik Costa checked it really hard, so I wonder if that's going to be a factor later on. A reminder under glory rules. It's a prioritized criteria. Number one, number of knockdowns, two, cumulative damage, three, number of clean scoring strikes with spectacular techniques, four, number of clean scoring strikes with normal techniques, and then the degree of aggressiveness as we are off to an aggressive start here in San Jose. Yeah, really, you know, gas is going to be a factor. It's a five-round fight. They're going pretty hard this first. Three punch combinations, short circuited by an outside low kick, a little shoe shine combination by Mikasa to the body. Mikasa staying busy with punches and punches. Cavallari, much like their first fight, going low with that kick. Scores with the body kick. Mikasa trying to shore up his kickboxing deficiencies. He's all about bringing the bombs and drama, and usually those bombs come in the form of those heavy hands, but Cavallari. Maybe more versatile. And there's the jab, double jab from Wikasa. He's got a battering ram for a jab. He really does it. He's really connected so well to the body and the head. There's that left body kick, the liver kick, in our first shout out to our mutual friend El Wapo Basrutin, who is a watching back home in Southern California. Nice combination. Good start to this championship bout. Zach Mikasa fighting like a man possessed, setting up those combinations a la a Mike Tyson style. Yeah, he's putting, he's making the investment here in round one in hopes of reaping big dividends in the form of the glory gold later in this fight. Going to the body, there's an outside low kick by Cavallari. And left hook to the body by Mikasa. The punching of Mikasa, the kicks of Cavallari. This is dynamite. Sold out crowd here at the SAP Center in San Jose for Dynamite. Bell and round number two. Steven, you hold the unofficial scorecard. How'd you score the opening three minutes as Cavallari goes again to the kicking department and uh, Mukasa checking those kicks. Mukasa won the first round 10-9. More effective with the punches, but Cavallari coming out strong. Oh, oh. Hyper aggressive attack by Cavallari. Good counter by Mukasa. And man, Cavallari loaded for Bear to kick off round number two. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, the kicks take a lot more energy than punches. Although Zach Mokas is throwing such hard punches, that's going to deplete him a little bit. Low Two of Cavallari's five glory wins have come inside the distance. And of course from Wikasa, now three and one in glory. All victories via the form of striking and that fight ending power of his. Mikasa pushing Cavallari to the ropes, and Cavallari doesn't want to be on the oh, Last time it was the left hand kick. This time it's the right hand kick. Mikasa is back on his feet. Good call by Marcos Rosales, not ruling it a knockdown. It was a slip. You talk about the shot per round, the SAP center, Mamma Mia! And I can't believe that Mikasa is back on the offensive. Mikasa, boy, I tell you. Cavallari's letting him know, hey, the mortar round is coming. And we caught some clinching it again here under glory rules, a limited clinch. You have to initiate a knee attack. And wow, this time out may be just what the doctor ordered for That's Zach Wikasa. One point, holding. What? One point, Did I, holding. Uh, wait a One point. Is there a warning given? I, I don't. Okay, fight. I'm really confused about the, the point deduction. Yeah, so am I. I, I, think I it, there should have been a warning at least because there, I didn't see any excessive holding. Well, Mukasa being given an opportunity to recover, now being kept at bay with the teams from Cavallari. But here in this round, Cavallari dropped Mukasa with a right Get kick. Fight. Mikasa. And remember, three knockdowns in a round, four in a fight constitutes a technical knockout. Mikasa continues to punish the body for those fight. hooks, both right and left. So Mikasa entered the danger zone and was able to escape, and now he's putting the leather on the body of Cavallari with 15 seconds left in the second frame. Walks into that jab by Cavallari. Stop on the bell. 
So some bombs and some drama. Welcome back to Let Dynamite as we revisit break. the action that led to the this point deduction break. by Go. referee Marcos Rosales. And we now return to live action, but we have Corey Schaefer who's standing by here right now with the rules committee, and we're just going to get his thoughts on what we just saw. A, a competitive fight for the championship, Corey. I don't want to put you on the spot, my man, but you saw the replay. Was that was that point deduction? It was entirely appropriate. The rules of Corey do not allow clinching uh, to stall the fight, to rest, or to stop the opponent from attacking. Without was, warning? He was cautioned twice. He was warned formally twice. Uh, I think that Marco Rosales showed uh, good restraint and took the point away at the exact appropriate time. Thank you very much for clearing that up, and that's why he's one of the best as well. We didn't hear the warnings. Corey Schaefer now confirming that there were two official warnings before the point deduction. So as we continue here in round three, how do you have it after two rounds, Stephen, on your unofficial card? Well, I had Bukasa winning that round, but with the point deduction, that's a 10-8 round suddenly. So all of a sudden, Cavallari is kind of behind, seriously behind. And one thing is that there's a language barrier. Cavallari doesn't really speak English, so if, if a guy's saying, hold, Stop. hold, don't Retreat. hold, or whatever, yeah. he's not going to understand go. him anyway. 50 seconds left Play. in the third. Get out let go. Break. Go. When Casa is starting to, to fade a little bit, he's pushing forward, he's throwing everything he can in every punch. Let go. Get out. Could be a waiting game for Salo Cavallaro. Go! It's a right kick from Wikasa. Wikasa really showing fatigue here. Dropping his hands. Good combination followed by that right head kick. And now Wikasa clowning Cavallari. Better be careful as Cavallari looked to surprise him with a spinning back fist. So Salo Cavallari and Zach Wikasa are headed to the championship rounds here at Dynamite. We're back with the championship rounds here at the SAP Center in San Jose. And as we head into these uh, pivotal rounds, Stephen, what is your unofficial score? Well, it's been a long night so far for Salo Cavallari because I have Zach Wikasa winning the first three rounds plus the point deduction. That's almost as if he lost four rounds in a row. So he's going to have to do something drastic in his last two rounds, get a couple knockdowns minimum to get this into draw or win category. But I see that Moikasa is starting to fade, like I said in the last round. He's starting to get tired, drop his hands, and that's going to be devastating. It's going to be a battle of endurance from this point on. Not surprising that Kabbalari holds a big advantage in the kicking department. So far, Moikasa. Unable to land that panda left hook or the left uppercut. Going to the body, though, effectively, and trying to sap Cavallari of his strength. But Cavallari keeps coming forward, and really, he appeared to be a, a man who would not be denied after everything that both of these individuals have had to overcome. And you know the old saying that combat sports, you don't choose combat sports, combat sports chooses you. And, and really, these two looking for a better way of life, and the only way they know how to to, to earn the income that would give them their dreams is to put it all on the line and find out just what each other is made of. Yeah, I got to tell you, Salo Cavallari, he's got an Iron Man body because he's ate, eaten some, some really hard shots so far. The pace is really slowing here in the fourth. Go! Cavallari just shielding up and he's getting hit. There's that head kick. Interesting because Zach Mukasa is rolling every time he throws that head kick. He rolls with it like he roll with a punch. Now Cavallari going to the body with the left hook. There's the low kick. And that really stung Moikasa's leg. There's the clinch and a couple knees by Cavallari. 
rounds. No official knockdowns yet in the fight, although there was a right hand, and I thought that right kick dropped Mwikasa, but as you so appropriately put it, Fight Professor Replay showed that it was off balance, just like that was off balance, but it was aesthetically pleasing, and it excited me for a moment. Because the last time he did it with the left kick, that was uh, the, yeah. the that was to close the show. Now, 10 seconds remaining in the fourth with the vacant glory light heavyweight championship Stop hanging the in the balance. Cavallari getting the better of that striking exchange. We are back with the final round of the sequel between Salo Cavallari and Zach Mwikasa. Cavallari in the black gloves, Mwikasa in the white gloves, heading into this fifth and final frame. Steven, how do you score it? I think Cavallari may have squeaked out that last round, but it was so close it could have gone either way, to be honest. And I think that he needs a knockout to defeat Zach Mwikasa a second time. Nice front kick, kick by Cavallari. Right hand through the guard. Continues to attack the head of Mwikasa. Mwikasa has been working the body sporadically. Now Stop going to the body me. with the right hand. Here's the clinch, the warning by the referee, who has already deducted a point from Salo Cavallari for holding. I have to say that this is the best Zach Mwikasa I've ever seen. Much more composed and yet still, Cavallari able to Fire off. Now they reset. Two minutes remaining. Body kick by Cavallari. And while Mwikasa has impressed you, he's also definitely slowed down. And this would, was the concern coming in just how would he look in that fifth and final round if it went there? And Cavallari continues to pot shot and then clinch. So both of them looking to slow things down when I think they should be picking them up. But of course. This is where Cavallari needs one of those big head kicks. Yeah, easier said than done when you're exactly at ringside. They exactly, because he's got it too. Yeah. Oh, good shot by Cavallari. Mouthpiece goes flying. No, 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 no. Nope. Who's is it? Referee Morales asks who's it is. Well, if it's not Cavallari's, the my wager would be it's Muikasa. Yeah. It was from a punch. No coaching. Hard fought Stop. battle, and they're really fading Stop. down the stretch, Hands both up. of them. Cavallari being the aggressor now with some punches and a spin kick that missed. Cavallari definitely winning this round, but it may be too little too late. Oh, right hand from Kabul or Mikasa on Cavallari. Mikasa, oh, gets stunned by that right hand. Cavallari going behind him, but man. Cavallari, all 360 kick, a tornado kick by Cavallari in the final minute of this championship bout coming up on the final 30 seconds. Nope. Another slip. Isn't, isn't that always the case, Stephen? We've done so many fight cards that you anticipate so much in terms of explosive action and fireworks, the kind that we're used to seeing with glory. But here tonight, for the fifth and final time, we are headed to the judges' scorecards, but they have a very important decision to make because the winner is the glory light heavyweight champion. We're back here at Dynamite in San Jose. We just completed the Glory Light Heavyweight Championship affair. There was Cavallari with that left head kick that finished proceedings the first time they met last November. There was a right head kick that I at the time mistakenly called a knockdown. He was knocked off balance. The referee Rosales did not rule it a knockdown, but then Cavallari was deducted a point for holding and yet they both end up going the full 15 minutes. So will Cavallari make it a clean sweep or will Mwikasa even this series and take the Glory Light Heavyweight Championship back to his native Africa? We're about to find out here once again is Tim Hughes. Ladies and gentlemen, after five championship rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard. They score this bout. 48-46.
48-46 and 47-47, a majority decision for your winner, and now Glory Light Heavyweight Champion of the World, Sala Kavalari! Still to come, we'll head to Los Angeles and look in on Joe Schilling, but up next, we travel to Amsterdam and number four ranked Jason Wilness as he prepares for battle. Knockout moves by Tough Shed. The flying knee. The overhand right. The spinning back fist. Blow away the competition. Save time and effort. For the best storage buildings and garages, there's only one place to shop, Tough Shed. You're in clearance sale going on now. For the store nearest you, call Tough Shed today at 1-800-BUY-TOUGH or visit us online at toughshed.com. It's sure to be a night of KOs in the Mile High City with Glory 24 Denver. 10 action-packed battles headlined by the middleweights as number two ranked Joe Schilling goes toe to toe with number three Jason Wilness. Then local favorite Dustin Jacoby against New York's Wayne Barrett. Plus, don't miss the one night heavyweight contender tournament. Live from the Magnus Arena, Glory 24 Denver, October 9th, live on Spike. Coming off a loss to Simon Marcus in the tournament final at Glory 20 Dubai, Jason knows the victory over Joe Schilling is one big step back to a potential title shot in the crowded middleweight division. Well, this is not throwing the combinations he did earlier. I'm tired. Simon Marcus! My uh, last fight on Glory was the lost against Simon Marcus on points. It was a good fight. You know, the first fight in the tournament was a hard fight, but uh, no excuses. I lost. It was a good fight. I, can, I could do a lot more in that fight, you know. Sometimes I wasn't able to uh, do anything. Hanged up and bruised. Body language seems to speak volumes. I'm a replacement of Artem Levin. He's uh, injured, and uh, I'm fighting Joe Schilling now. You know, a big opportunity for me, because uh, he was also the Glory uh, Tournament uh, champion. He's a good fighter. He got uh, good knees, you know, he got a uh, good heart. I want to get him because he was the Glory uh, champion. You know, so it's a big name for me to get in. So I have to go 100%. I'm a, I'm a monster, man. <laughs> so because, I, you know, I've, I always come to fight. Every fight I'm getting better and better and harder. And uh, my mentality is like, uh, you know, always grow, always uh, put yourself on the good spot in the fight. You know, maybe you took a loss in the last fight. So now I'm thinking, hey, I'm gonna get back to uh, to do some things now. And he just buckled and dropped Herrera with the wow. left hook. I think it's a uh, it's a very important fight because uh, it's very close to the you know to the title fight. So maybe if I put on a good performance, maybe we uh, we can get that shot. Left hook behind the guard. Yeah! Yeah! Maybe one day I can uh, get the rematch on Artem Levin because he's the champion right now. So uh, it will be uh, beautiful to uh, take my revenge and also take the belt. Yes, the training with uh, Rico Fufa is. Uh, it's, uh, it's been good, you know, he's an intelligent fighter, he's the current champion, he's, uh, he's very intelligent with uh, fighting and he helps me with, uh, with a lot of, uh, you know, tactics and sparring and movements and also the other guys and my brother, he, uh, 
he's a big, uh, good, uh, a good sparring partner for us. Right now, uh, me and my brother Jafar Wilm is uh, fighting on the same card again. So uh, we must take that uh, the, na the name back. The last time we fought on the same card, my brother gets uh, KO'd. I lost no points, so uh, we must put it uh, back in a good name. My relationship is, uh, is very good with my brother. You know, he's, uh, he's everything to me and also uh, from his side. We, uh, we do everything together. If we go to the, to the mall, to the cinema, we do everything together. I'm more nervous when uh, my brother has to fight than uh, myself because I do everything hands and he's my, uh, my brother, but maybe more than a brother. He's my uh, best friend, so uh, I always get uh, a little bit scary when he's fighting. I'm uh, fighting uh, Joe Schilling. Uh, it's nothing personal, net, not that I don't like him, but uh, I'm going to uh, knock his uh, head off, man. I'm, uh, I'm very, uh, very sharp. I want this uh, fight really bad. I'm Jason Wilness, fighting at Glory 24, Denver. Joe Schilling, be ready, because I will be. Still to come, we'll get a preview of Glory 24 and the middleweights by Glory's own Mauro Ranallo and Steven Quadros. But up next, it's shilling time as we head to L.A. It's sure to be a night of KOs in the Mile High City with Glory 24 Denver. Ten action-packed battles headlined by the middleweights as number two ranked Joe Schilling goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with number three Jason Wilness. Then local favorite Dustin Jacoby against New York's Wayne Barrett. Plus, don't miss the one-night heavyweight contender tournament. Live from the Magnus Arena, Glory 24 Denver, October 9th, live on Spike. At 31 years of age, Joe Schilling is at a crossroads at Glory. His lone appearance in 2015 was a victory over Robert Thomas at Glory 19, Virginia. He had his sights on a rematch with Artem Levin at Glory 24, Denver for the middleweight title. But due to injury, Levin had to withdraw from the fight and Schilling was not too happy. But he knows he will have his hands full with number three ranked Jason Wilness. Glory contacted me about six weeks notice and offered me a fight with Artem Levin for the title. And, uh, you know, it was a short notice fight. I took the fight on short notice, so I was excited. It was Artem Levin is the trilogy fight for the belt, which is what everybody wants to see. It's what the fans are excited about. It's what I'm excited about. It's what he should be excited about. And uh, <clears throat> I accepted the fight for that reason. Like three days later, got told that uh, Artem was out. And uh, about three days after that, they told me it was Jason Wilness, who's uh, another really tough, high-level guy. So they're not doing me any favors. So uh, you know, I was excited. I thought, I thought I was fighting Levin, but now I'm fighting Jason Wilness. And, I mean, yeah, I was disappointed. You know, I was excited. It was the Artem Levin title fight. It's the fight that you know was. Everybody's wanted to see since last man standing. Joe Schilling and Artem Levin, who will be the last man standing? We are set to go. Uh, training for a fight in Denver is way harder than, than in anywhere else in the country. You know, if you're training for a fight in Denver at high elevation, you have to be in ridiculously good shape at sea level to be able to hang at altitude. So it's, a, it's definitely an issue. It's not something I'm looking forward to. I'm excited to be back in the ring. For the last like five years, our weight class has been 
dominated by three people, Artem Levin, Simon Marcus, and Joe Schilling. Um, after this fight, I would expect to fight for the title. Simon wants to fight for the title. I don't know what. I'm not a matchmaker, but I uh, have consistently been in the top two, top three for the last couple of years. So uh, yeah, I'm always expecting that title fight. I think the fans want to see that title fight. I think everybody wants to see that fight. But regardless of all that, I have to beat Jason Wilmes on October 9th. So that's my focus right now. Yeah, I saw Jason's last fights, last couple fights, he fight with Simon Marcus, and uh, yeah, I thought he won it, Simon Marcus, to be honest. Um, yeah, I mean, he's a tough, he's a tough opponent. He's got like a really strong Dutch kickboxing style. He you know, does the shell, and uh, we'll fire out of that shell with hooks and you know, big looping hooks and uh, low kicks. Got good low kicks. Yeah, you can't look past Jason Willis. He's a tough opponent. When he has a good night, he has a good night. He's a dangerous guy. He beat Wayne. He's uh, he's beat some good guys. So I just want to get past Willis this on October 9th. And then yeah, the title fight should be next. That's what I, that's what I want. Artem got hurt or something and had to pull out of this one. So when he's feeling better, I expect the title fight after I stop Willis. Artem couldn't stop Willis. Simon couldn't stop Willis. I'm gonna stop Willis, and then I want the title fight. Watch me fight Glory, October 9th, Denver, Colorado. Jason Wilmes. Up next, a preview with Glory's Mauro Ronaldo and Steven Quadros. Knockout moves by Tough Shed. The flying knee. The overhand right. The spinning back fist. Blow away the competition. Save time and effort. For the best storage buildings and garages, there's only one place to shop. Tough Shed. You're in clearance sale going on now. For the store nearest you, call Tough Shed today at 1 800 Buy Tough or visit us online at toughshed.com. It's sure to be a night of KOs in the Mile High City with Glory 24 Denver. Ten action-packed battles headlined by the middleweights as number two ranked Joe Schilling goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with number three Jason Wilness. Then, local favorite Dustin Jacoby against New York's Wayne Barrett. Plus, don't miss the one-night heavyweight contender tournament. Live from the Magnus Arena, Glory 24 Denver, October 9th, live on Spike. Moro Ranello alongside the fight professor Stephen Quadro says we gear up for Glory 24 coming up Friday, October 9th as the Glory Ring returns to the Mile High City of Denver for an action-packed night at the forefront the highly competitive and, dare I say, convoluted middleweight scene as we have, of course, the champion Artem Levin was supposed to face Joe Schilling in the main event, the rubber match for the title. Levin is on the sidelines injured. Schilling will now face Jason Wilness of the Netherlands, a couple of top-ranked middleweights going at it. Schilling returning to kickboxing following a devastating knockout loss in MMA. How will that impact Wilness's preparation? Well, Wilness is going to look at that and think, I'm going to seize the moment. This guy's on a downward trend, whereas Joe Schilling, he's going to be very angry. He's going to be pissed off at himself, and there he is going to be a fire in his belly, and he's going to take it out on Wilness that night. Now, when you look at this matchup and we talk about the, the X's and O's, as it were, fight professor, talk about what each of these athletes bring to the glory ring. Joe Schilling is a tall middleweight, six foot three. He's got a long reach, so he's going to want to use that right hand, that straight left hand, a couple low kicks, maybe some high kicks. Wilmes, get on the inside. Go to the liver with that left hook and with the low kick. Now, of course, the winner, one step closer at a title shot. We can't forget about Simon Marcus, who is, of course, also injured right now in a controversial title challenge of Artem Levin earlier this year in San Diego. So a lot of factors at play in the middleweight division, but we know that Joe Schilling is going to be loaded for bear, returning to glory with a chip on his shoulder following that devastating KO loss. And Jason Wilness taking the fight on short notice. Hey, when opportunity knocks, you've got to answer that door. Yeah, you really do, because I I'm telling you, Right now, this card is really going to be stacked. Middleweights hungry for different reasons, going to tear each other apart. Now, also in Denver on Friday, October 9th, the Glory 24, the return 
Well, of a hometown favorite, Dustin Jacoby, the always game mixed martial artist turned kickboxer, was on a big losing streak, but then summoned up his inner resolve and did what he had to do to defeat all of his opposition at the recent qualification tournament held in Las Vegas. A big night for Jacoby, and I'm sure it's going to be an even bigger night when he returns to Denver and takes on Wayne Barrett. Barrett, five and three as a kickboxer. Four of those five victories come inside the distance. Something tells me we're going to see fistic fireworks in Denver on October 9th. And it's really going to be a competitive fight, and, and really, uh, Jacoby's got to bring his A game because Wayne Barrett, He's got a, has had some losses, but he's really a phenomenal athlete. He's going to want to stay on the outside and try and pick apart Jacoby. Jacoby going to bring that verb. He's on the upswing now. He's got to really capitalize on that and get right in uh, Wayne Barrett's face. All right, we're going to attempt to clear up the middleweight division in glory. Don't miss the action when it comes your way on Friday, October 9th. It's Glory 24 Denver. For more information, visit our new website address, glorykickboxing.com. When we come back... Glory makes an announcement. Hey, it's Mauro Ranello alongside the fight professor, Stephen Quadros. We are in the bowels of the SAP Center in San Jose with some explosive news about an upcoming Glory event. On Friday, November 6th, Glory Kickboxing returns to Milan, Italy for Glory 25. And in the main event, just announced the return of at one time the pound for pound king of kickboxing, Dr. Giorgio Petrosian. He faces Canadian upstart Josh Johnson, who suffered his first loss in a glory ring at the Glory Lightweight Contender Tournament at Glory 22 in France against eventual winner Sitachai Sitsong Pinong. But man, my jaw dropped when I heard about this matchup. A huge test for the Canadian. Yeah, they're throwing him in deep, but he feels really ready for this thing. And he's taking on Georgia Petrosian in his hometown in Milan. So Georgia Petrosian, who was basically like the Floyd Mayweather, the Muhammad Ali of kickboxing until he suffered that loss to Andy Risti, now he's going to rebuild his career inside glory. He has has picked up a win outside of the Glory organization since losing to Risti, but Dr. Pedrosian returns to Glory on November 6, Glory 25 in Milan, Italy against Canadian Josh Johnsey. Don't forget for more Glory Kickboxing news, visit the new website address. It's glorykickboxing.com. That will do it for Countdown to Glory 24 Denver. When the middleweights take center stage and the heavyweights compete with the winner one step closer to a title shot. We'll see you October 9th in Denver.